This feature is brought to you by JPHMP Direct, an online community for advances in public health. In this tutorial, I will be discussing some points to consider when writing the results section of a manuscript, which is adapted from a written post in the Scholarship of Public Health series, written by Dr. Justin Moore. You can find the full post at jphmpdirect.com. Keep in mind that these tips are specific to JPHMP as a practitioner-oriented journal. There will be five points to consider, with the first one being multiple covariates. If possible, choose analyses that are as parsimonious as possible. While a complicated model that controls for multiple covariates may be technically correct, there is a difference between being correct and being useful. Let's take this hypothetical example with a smoking cessation intervention positively correlated with number of days sober at 30 days post-intervention. There may be other variables that are also affecting sobriety, such as age, socioeconomic status, and years of smoking. If a model must control for multiple covariates, consider strategies that aid in the interpretation of coefficients, such as centering variables on their mean in cases where zero has no meaning, such as with a continuous variable like age. An age of zero wouldn't mean anything in this model, but centering on the average age of the group, such as 22, might make more sense when interpreting the coefficient. This brings us to our next point, interpreting coefficients. You want to avoid presenting coefficients without interpreting them, especially in complex regression models where the interpretation is difficult or hampered by transformations. Take this hypothetical example where the table has listed some associations between participant characteristics and number of days sober, post-tobacco cessation intervention. We would interpret the first association as a one-year increase in age was associated with 5.16 more days of sobriety, controlling for the other predictors in the model. The third point is p-values. Let's say your research study hypothesis was that significantly more participants in an intervention group receiving smoking cessation will remain sober after 30 days, as compared to the control group. You set your alpha value to 0.05. Simply stating that there is significance with a p-value of less than 0 0.002 doesn't give us the entire story. Never simply present p-values. When possible, present point estimates with confidence intervals. So for example, a better way to present these results might be to say that individuals in the intervention group were 5.3 times more likely to remain sober after 30 days as compared to the control group. The 5.3 is listed as the odds ratio with 3.7 to 7.2 as the 95% confidence interval. Also keep in mind that at JPHMP we use the American Medical Association Manual of Style. So statistical significance, meaning p-values, should be expressed to two digits to the right of the decimal point, unless the p-value is less than 0.01, in which case the p-value should be expressed to three digits to the right of the decimal point. And that takes us to our fourth point, significance. Never attempt to describe results that fail to achieve significance at the a priori threshold for statistical significance such as suggesting that the results approached significance or displayed a trend towards significance. Similarly, statistics are never highly significant. The last important point to be made about the results section is data visualization. Let's take a look at this article in JPHMP, measuring sub-county differences in population health using hospital and census-derived data sets. Many journals, including JPHMP, allow for readers to download tables, figures, and images separately from the article for inclusion in presentations. More visually informative and attractive figures will be more likely disseminated. In a similarly thoughtful process, think carefully about the manner in which data are presented in tables. Tables should stand alone, as many readers prefer to glean your results from your tables rather than the text. And that concludes this tutorial for tips on writing the results section of a manuscript. Be sure to check out more from this column series by Dr. Justin Moore. 
and visit the following link for our tutorial on writing an abstract.